You are listening to the Morning Breath Podcast. Please enjoy today's show, hosted by Pastors Matt and Jessica Stahlbaum. Hey, welcome to Morning Breath, your drive time devotion. Sure to jumpstart your day. I'm Matt, and this is Jessica. What's up? I hope you feel jump started. That was a good intro. Jumped up. That was just Woo! <laughs> jumped up. Yes, this is Morning Breath, where we take one chapter of the Bible, we read it together, and hopefully read it with you, and then we talk about what God is breathing on it. And we are starting a new book of the Bible today, and it is the book of Luke, one of the Gospels, one of my favorite books in the Bible, uh, written by Luke, who was a doctor, a physician, very smart. Um, I love it in the Amplified Translation as well. It's a little lengthy, but it's it just adds so much like depth and layers, and I love it. And yeah, what translation are you in these days? I read. New? I'm reading the new uh, the New King James Version. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So um, Luke was the one, the guy that basically followed Paul around through the Book of Acts, uh, and really in the second chap- second half of Acts. Acts is actually kind of broken down into three sort of different time periods. But Luke shows up somewhere in the middle of all of that, and he records Paul's life. Mm-hmm. He also then goes back and writes what happened as a, as a like a re- basically like a reporter detective. He goes back and he writes the whole book of Luke based on re- reporting what all the disciples were saying and everything mm-hmm. they were doing. And, and most people would think Paul wrote most of the New Testament Um from you know from Jesus' life on, from Matthew all the way to Revelation, but actually Luke wrote more words than Paul did. Yeah. Paul wrote more books, but Luke mm. more, wrote more words. Luke and Acts are longer yeah. than all the writings of Paul put together. I'm so grateful. Yeah, that and he, he did. was he was also not a disciple of Jesus, even though he writes a gospel. He had never, as far as we know, not met Jesus, and um, and if he did, we don't know about it. Mm-hmm. All of his was details written to this person named Theophilus. And it would be like a detective, a private investigator, a reporter going and finding the facts and putting them together. And it just happens to line up with the other three gospels of the people who actually did meet Jesus. And it's, yeah, that's how Mark, incredible it is. We don't know if Mark met Jesus. We're not really sure. He's probably a young person who was around Jesus, but, uh, Matthew and Luke, or excuse me, Matthew and John were the disciples of Jesus. But Mark also is one where we're not exactly sure where he fits in the whole thing. And so... When you said Matthew, it made me think of that uh, show, The Chosen, which I just have to give props to and recommend. And I, I will tell you that I was one of those people who were like... I don't know, not into yeah. it. Like it's a Christian production and honestly they haven't been notoriously amazing in the past and yep. we didn't watch it forever. And then in January of 2021, just a few months ago, we decided we weren't really watching any other TV because we were doing a fast of um, media and stuff. And so we watched The Chosen together as a family, season one, and you it's an app. So you can find The Chosen app. I think it's on other streaming things too. How incredible. Like I think we both cried every episode. Every episode. It is so good. And I I say Matthew reminded me because he's one of the best characters on there. He's a tax collector and the guy who plays him is he's, just so good. He he is he's a tax collector, but he's like an idiot savant, which is, you know, a person who's got all these like, you know, idiosyncrasies that are kind of like why are they doing that? But they're also crazy smart, yeah. like to the point where they're brilliant. And uh, that Matthew kind of plays this character, and you never think about that. Like you never think about what was his actual personality. It humanizes like? what was, oh, yeah. everything, everyone, and you can like picture. Obviously, the, they don't have the actual person who's Matthew from the Bible, but they they pick. I don't know. It just comes they to give, life. Yeah, they give Matthew a a realistic personality, personality of a person who might fit that role yeah. who would be a tax collector in that day. It would fit a certain person and I'd uh, never seen anything like it. And it just, it was really neat. It, you know, the different characters in the Bible come to life. Uh, Nicodemus and they just came out know, with season two. Peter and just different per- people. Yep. Really and so cool. we're we excited about it. season two. Yep. Highly recommend it. Yep. If you're going to go in there, go, that wasn't exactly perfect. Duh. I don't even care. Like, just stop <laughs> talking to me because if that's what you think is going to happen in a television production, impossible. It, you know, it, it, the it only has its thing intended that's super purpose. Perfectly pure is yes, the, the, word the pure of God. word of God. Okay. Yes. If you're going to put it in a movie, if you're going to put it in TV, there's going to be something that's going to be slightly off yep. here or there. 
And I'm good with slightly off for creative license, but I'm not good with, you know, unbiblical, like you told it, you, no, you told the wrong a, facts. The facts are the same. Yep. It was so good. So good. Okay. We recommend that. All right. We have a question and this is from Miss Lindsay Brown. And she said, what is your most used emoji? What emoji? <laughs> I, you do one a lot. I do laugh, cry, laugh a lot. Cry, laugh, straight on or cry, laugh sideways. Sideways. <laughs> I do that one too. What else do I do? I don't know. Head slap? Yeah, oh, yes. Palm to forehead for sure. Shrugging shoulders. Shrug shoulders. Heart. That's a big one I do for a you. Bit, a heart. I do the heart face with the hearts all around it. Um, definitely the laughing face sideways for sure. Yeah. And I think that dated us. Wh- okay. Which ones do I do then besides You want to do the rocket? The rocket? The fire? I do the fire. I yep. do the flex. Yep. You know? Yep. High five. Double high five. Maybe. Is that what that is? Yeah. The two hands? Yeah. I'm always looking at that like... praise the Lord? Kind of. <laughs> like, same kind of concept. Like, woo, yeah, woo. You know, yeah. party time. You know, an emoji can really go a long way it's in a text because you can't read, uh, you can't hear tone. And yeah. so I think an, it, a well-placed emoji emotion. really helps get across your intention. Emotion. Your emotion. Yeah, an emotion. So, you know, thank you. If you don't have emotion in what you say, yeah. it can be interpreted 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 <laughs> a lot of different ways yeah just like that so, word yeah okay all right thanks Lindsay. thanks for asking okay we're in uh, luke chapter one and i'm gonna read um through verse 40 because there's 80 verses we'll see you in an hour go <laughs> no. people love to hear me read the bible i know you. it's gonna be the most riveting hour of my life okay. yeah. <laughs> since as is well known many have undertaken do you want me to read your version so it's less yeah, i knew he was gonna do. ask that okay luke, i didn't ask you ask me i knew he was feeling it in his heart because we are one all right luke chapter one no i in, to be honest with you i just took the opportunity with the question yes i want you to do it in as much as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. There was in those days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord." And the whole multitude of the people was praising outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place. I just realized, I think he's doing that because he called his wife old. Good job, Gabriel. Got him back. <laughs> because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So it was as soon as the days of his service were completed that he departed to his own house. Now, after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women." 
When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the high the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Verse 41. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. By why this is granted to me, that the mother of the Lord should come to me. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. She might actually sing, actually, yeah. technically. This is her song. This is the song. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly, the state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped the servant of Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, excuse me, our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. Now Elizabeth full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There was no one, there is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to the father. What would he like to call him? You want John? You want Zacharias? What do you want, right? <laughs> so and he asked for a writing tablet, wrote the saying, His name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was open, his tongue was loose, and he spoke, praising God. Then fear came on all who dwelt around them, and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. Of Judea, And all those who heard him kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, prophesied saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world, be, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered by the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him. All the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. So the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts 
till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Amen. Amen. I was just thinking like, what pressure? Just put pressure. my Bible away. <laughs> What pressure to be born into. Like for us as like modern day American parents, we're like, we want our kids to grow up and be like professional soccer players and professional gymnasts and like go to the, and doctors and lawyers. And like, he's like, oh, you're only going to be like preparing the way for the Messiah. Got him. Like no wonder he went into the desert and hid (laughs) for a while. Well, he partly, probably because he was actually a Nazarite. Too. Yeah, he took a Nazarite. A Nazarite. Out, most yeah. likely, one of yeah. the reasons why he didn't drink anything is yep. because they can't touch. Can't even touch a grape. Can't even go in a grape yard. Wow. You know, grape yard is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> vineyard. Can't even go in a grape yard or a vineyard. Your choice. <laughs> That's funny. I have to say, verse forty-five, and I will read it in the Amplified tra- Translation. It says, and blessed, spiritually fortunate and favored by God is she who believed and confidently trusted that there would be a fulfillment of the things that were spoken to her by the angel sent from the Lord. That's something Elizabeth spoke over Mary. And I think what a sweet declaration to speak over someone. First, I would love for someone to look at me and think that of me, that I have so believed God and stepped out in so much faith that someone would say, blessed Spiritually fortunate and favored are you, are you, Jessica, who believed and confidently trusted in what God said to her. Like what, what a beautiful thing to have said over you. And what a, what a thing to just attain to. Like, I want that to be said of me. I want people to look at me and say, man, blessed are you for believing God and, and obeying what he said to do and just trusting him. That's so good. Yeah. You know, just thinking about words that we speak over people, um, they're important. Mm-hmm. They're impacting. They make a huge difference. We're we're in the middle of a relationship series at church talking about relationships. And recently I, I just spoke about the power of words, how um, we all know what it feels like to be loved. We all know what it feels like to be unloved. Um, and we all know what loving words are. We all know what unloving words are. Um, but we don't always use the opportunities that we have to speak loving words over people. And some of the most significant times to do that are when I'm going through a crisis, I need a word. When that person's going through a crisis, they could actually speak a word over somebody else, believe it or not, and God would pour into you. Mm-hmm. One great way, one great time to speak a good word over somebody is when you're struggling with that person and like your relationship with them you know that your love for somebody grows by 17% according to empirical research by psychology today by 17% just from saying something positive about them. Just from saying, I like you with your mouth, you actually like them more by 17% just by saying it, just by saying, I love you. So if I say you are highly favored and blessed among women, I actually increase my love for Mm -hmm. you as well as you receive that word. But I receive that word too. Like I, I see that over you just by saying that aloud. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a benefit that you receive just from speaking words over other people. They don't just get the benefit. Of course they get the benefit, but you get the benefit. Um, You know, just scientifically emotions are not fully understood until you express them with words, Mm -hmm. okay? Words, it's it's how we actually identify what emotions that we're facing. If we are feeling afraid, but we never speak that out loud, and we say, I'm afraid, oh, wow, now those emotions are reality. Because maybe it's fear, maybe it's insecurity, maybe it's not, maybe it's just confusion. Mm -hmm. When you speak, I'm afraid, or, you know what, I'm just confused. I was like, well, I'm not afraid anymore. You bring clarity to the emotions and the thoughts that you have, which is why it's so important to talk to other people, why it's important to share what's going on in your life. Why, and and now now we're sharing God words to people. Now, what do you think we get out of that? More than 17 percent. Well, I love how science is proving God's word true. mm -hmm. Like death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. And then confession, James 5, 16, confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you would be healed. Like I know when I'm struggling with something internally, often when I voice it to you, it A, loses all its power and even sounds silly, you know, when voiced out loud or B, helps bring clarity to what I'm actually feeling and thinking and needing and helps me with the next step, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. It's just seriously proving what God 
already said and told us, you know, thousands of years ago. It's crazy. Yeah, I think some people struggle with confessing what's wrong in their life. They live in isolation. They rage against wise judgment, yeah. that sort of thing. But I think there's another struggle. People actually struggle with confessing what's right, what's right mm-hmm. with, with somebody. Yeah. And Why do we do that? Why do we hold back good? And it says, like, don't hold back anything good when you have it to give to someone. Is it is it like embarrassment? It's pride. It's it's a vulnerability. All of those things. Yeah. You talk yourself out of whether that person actually needs, needs it. it. Yeah. You don't want to be embarrassed if you're wrong. You don't want to be vulnerable out there. emotionally around them or whatever that might be. Yeah. You, you know, I I sometimes have a thought. Hey, I want to say something to somebody that's, you know. Say somebody's going through something and I don't know them very well. And even if it's just a text conversation, this happened to me recently. And I felt like I needed to say, hey, if if you if you need me, I'll be there for you. Just let me know. And I wrestled with that because we didn't have that kind of relationship. Yeah. And and I didn't want them to think I'm a, you know, think anything poorly of me and this, that, and the other thing. And I was sitting here going, Who cares? This is who I am. Like yeah. if you can't take it. <laughs> I don't care. Like, yeah, and you're offering something kind. I think yeah. it's just the enemy wants to to confuse us and trip us up and make us think to overthink things instead overthink of just it. like just put it out there. Instead of ourselves. Yes. You know? And uh, if they don't like it, lump it. Who cares? <laughs> that's the thing, right? <laughs> Lumping it. Apparently. All right, so verse 37 is one of the most famous verses ever. And it says, for with God, nothing is or ever shall be impossible. And I love reading that. And con- I love coming across like well-known scriptures and actually seeing them in context. And the context was the fact that Elizabeth was being told that she was going to conceive in her old old age. And the Holy Spirit was just saying, there's nothing, nothing is impossible with me. And that is something we can hang our hat on and just know that whatever hard situation that we're in, no matter the level, like God cares, first of all, he cares where you're at. He cares about, if he cares so much to clothe the sparrows and the lilies of the valley, like he, how much more does he care for you in your situation? So I just want to remind you that nothing is or ever shall be impossible with God. Yeah. Nothing. No thing. That's good. I think that means nothing in the Hebrew, right? Mm -hmm. Or the Greek? Nothing. It's really good. Um, Verse, uh, I did that, 20. I just thought the context or the contrast of Zacharias being told this impossible thing was going to happen by an angel and he doubted and he had like, how is this going to happen? And then Mary was told this impossible thing was going to happen by an angel and she also brought up questions and yet she wasn't struck dumb (laughs) and mute. And like, I just wondered, was it the motive of the heart of behind the question? Because Zacharias's could have been very much like, instead of saying, I believe, help my unbelief, it was like, never, that is never going to happen. Maybe he was so bitter from decades of trying to conceive and, and his wife struggling with this. It says that she said, this shame has been removed from me. Like yeah. what was in his heart that when he questioned, the angel was like, oh, you got to be mute. But actually what a gift to him. Well, and sometimes I think we need to be struck mute when we're <laughs> trying to believe something for God because our own mouth gets us in so much trouble. I know it's an odd thing. And I, I, a lot of people have wondered and questioned this. I've wondered and questioned this. Like, But I will tell you, so having a baby in your old age compared to having a baby without having uh, intercourse with somebody, Mm -hmm. that's two totally different things. Mm -hmm. People don't just spontaneously get pregnant from the dawn of time. Yeah. No one. And since then. No one. And no one ever will again. Like, you can't have a baby without the the egg and the sperm. Like, you can't do it. But we've seen people get pregnant. Your mom got pregnant at 46. Mm -hmm. Sarah which Zachariah would have known about, got pregnant at 98 or 99 years yeah. old. Like, and he would have known that That's as so a man true. of faith. That if, if uh, I mean, it wasn't, this wasn't a new miracle. Yeah. This was something that had been done. Yeah, it was probably hard if, if like he'd experienced a lot of hardship with that in the past. And, you know, he was speaking out of his hurts. He was speaking out of his bitterness. He could have been speaking out of doubt. He could have just been saying something dumb. But at the end of the day, it is a lot different. It's true. I never thought about that. Like you go to a 13-year-old and say, hey, you're going to have a baby next year. And they're like, what? I don't know a man. Like, (laughs) am I I supposed to do something about that? Like, 
that's what I would be thinking, I guess, if I was Mary. Like, wait, well, am I supposed to have a baby with Joseph? Also, you know, I don't verse, know a man. Verse 38, she says, or wait, what, what, oh, 34, she said, how will this be since I'm a virgin and have no int- intimacy with a man? And then in 38, she says, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Yeah, so that's... Like, she humbly was like, I'm okay. Thank you, Lord. Like shockingly received it. Oh my gosh, like so obedient. You don't really get that impression. No, and it felt very different. So anyway, that was interesting. Food for thought. I'm glad I wasn't the only one thinking that. We love you guys. We hope that you have a great day and we will see you next week. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Morning Breath podcast. If you did, we would love for you to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. To follow along with our daily chapter list and for quick access to East Coast podcasts, events, and more, download the East Coast app. It's the best way to stay connected with everything East Coast. We would also love for you to join our online community. Just search for East Coast Christian Center on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again for listening to the Morning Breath podcast.